2023 Range Rover Sport First Drive Review, A New Experience. Land Rover management was not initially keen on making the Range Rover Sport as there was a fear that it might have an adverse impact on the Range Rover itself. After all, the Big Daddy Range Rover has always been the flagship model and one of the most well-known luxury SUVs in the world. After wrestling with the idea of whether they needed another Range Rover model at all, the decision was made to go ahead, but it had to be something very different. That was definitely the case for the Range Stormer concept that debuted in 2004 at the Detroit Auto Show. Then in 2005, it became a production model, and the Range Rover Sport was born. It was an immediate hit with everyone from school-run parents to music stars the world over. It was more athletic both visually looks and in the driving experience, and it made its owners look cool. Plus, it was fast and loud, something to take on the Mercedes-AMG G63 Brigade. The arrival of the third generation brings with it some major changes, not least of all when it comes to design, suspension, and the introduction of plug-in hybrid technology. But can it still take the rough with the smooth as a Range Rover should? We drove the new SUV in Spain to find out. Exterior design, reserved, but sophisticated. Like the Range Rover and the Veeler, it's all about reductionist design at Land Rover these days. Outside of the design studio, to the rest of us, that means not making cars that look fussy and over-designed, not that we're pointing any fingers at Audi or BMW here. The side profile is purposeful but smooth, the roofline tapering into the longest spoiler ever on a Range Rover. Up front, there are new LED daytime running lights leading into a grille with a slightly darker and more aggressive look than the last generation. Slim LED lamps are a focal point on the tailgate, too, where again, it all looks simple and uncluttered. The design won't appeal to everyone and is great if you appreciate minimalism, but not so much if you want the bling and excess of an Escalade. Engine, Performance and MPG, Environmental Performance The big news is the debut of the new plug-in hybrid version of the Sport with the powertrain designation P440e. This setup combines a turbocharged 3.0-liter, inline six-cylinder Ingenium gasoline engine developing 395 horsepower on its own mated to a 141 horsepower electric motor fed by a 32.8 kWh, 31.8 kWh usable, battery pack. Combined, the system generates 434 horsepower and 457 lbft of torque, dispatching the 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint in acclaimed 5.5 seconds before topping out at 140 miles per hour. Before the knowledgeable pointed out, yes, the European spec version gets 510 horsepower, and no, the US can't have it, not officially anyway. Power isn't the main point of it, though, it's all about being able to cruise through downtown in electric mode, silently gliding past the crowds of people knowing that you're not putting out any toxic fumes through the remarkably unblemished exhaust tips at the back. No, we're not insinuating anything. Should you choose to engage EV mode, or if the car's clever geofencing does it for you, then there's the potential to drive up to 48 miles for the US market. It'll charge up to 80% in under an hour on a 50 kilowatts rapid charger, or you can just plug it in at home for 5 hours to get a full charge. Total range is claimed to be around 460 miles. There's also the option of the mild hybrid electric vehicle, which is basically the same gasoline engine but without the batteries. It's not that down on power compared to its proper hybrid sibling at 355 horsepower for the P360 SE and 395 horsepower for the P400 Dynamic C, but you lose out on that EV mode. Land Rover reckons they will both still return a decent WLTP combined cycle score of 30.1 miles per gallon, although the EPA will likely be a little stricter. If you think it's all electrification, then there's one more, at least until something shouty with an SVR badge comes along. The P530e uses the BMW-sourced 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8 that pumps out 523 horsepower, will hit 60 miles per hour in 4.3 seconds, and run on to a top end of 155 miles per hour. For now, that's only available in the limited first edition, but you can bet demand will see that engine quickly added to regular models in due course. Interior design, features, and dimensions, luxury space. The interior of the new Range Rover balances that feeling of classic British sophistication with some of the latest tech and the option of either traditional or modern materials, including some that are recycled. 
One of the most interesting of those is trim inlays made from carbon fiber that has been chopped into little pieces and then reassembled. The dashboard sits higher than in the Range Rover, the seat's 0.8 inches lower, and there's a second piece to the top of the instrument cluster that's supposed to be reminiscent of a sports car. Beneath that is a 13.7-inch driver information display with a large degree of personalization to it. This should be the main focus for the driver, but for the passenger, or when you're at a standstill, the center stack features a 13.1-inch Pivi Pro infotainment touchscreen that gives you access to lots of cool stuff. This provides access to audio, connectivity, and more off-road controls and cameras than most will ever use. Oh, and it can access Amazon Alexa these days, too, so you can order something outdoors to wear while you are off-roading or on-roading, for that matter. The seats are sumptuous regardless of the materials used and are now adjusted by controls on the door panel similarly to Mercedes-Benz products. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.